You've got one boat packed up, good to go. The one in the, in the plastic is mine. It came back from Portugal. And this is the one I've been training in. It's the boat that I raced in in, uh, in London. And uh, there's a Beijing boat up there, and there's an Athens boat up there, and there's lots of boats from World Cups and stuff. This is not the one you'll compete in in Rio? I'm not superstitious, but I do things in the right order, right? I waited until after uh, qualifying for the Olympics to order them, and uh, when I did sit down and talk to Andre from, from Nello, who's been making my boats for over 10 years, he's like, yeah, we've got to make it in like three days because the container's leaving on Sunday, so thanks for the heads up. Like, you could have done this in February. Imagine, like, if I didn't qualify and my team had to, like, unload a boat that said Adam on it or something. It'd be so embarrassing. When I heard you were going for number four and you'd made it, I kind of did a double take. <laughs> do, you, do you get that reaction a bit? Um, I don't know. And I mean, you're not the first person to be a little bit surprised. Um, I don't know why. I haven't really stopped. Like, I raced in 2013, 14, and 15, so. But four is unusual. I mean, you can't deny that. When I was faced with retiring after London, I thought, yeah, three Olympics is pretty good. I'm happy with my career. I've accomplished my goals. And then I thought about closing the door on Rio. And then thinking, that means I'm closing the door on Tokyo, and that means I'm not going to the Olympics in 2024, and that means I'm not going to be on the national team anymore. And that means it's done. It's finished. For the rest of my life. Not like for four years or eight years. And I, it's not like I wanted to be sick of it when I wanted to quit, but I wanted to make sure I wanted to be finished. Adrian, this is it. This is it. When this is gone, I die. Like, this version of Adam Vancouver is dead. <laughs> I have to move on. So it just means you find a new way to express yourself because your expression is on the water. Yeah, it's like, that's one of the things that paddling is for me. It's my artistic expression. It's my outlet. It's what I do when I'm frustrated. It's what I derive almost all of my happiness from. It's my, it feeds my ego. And to not admit that to myself is, you know, ignoring something very important. And yeah, it's a lot more than just a job. Derive almost all your happiness from. That just sunk in. That's a huge thing to say. It's true. And no matter what I do next, if I get a job at a bank or go to law school or open a restaurant or, you know, make coffee, I'm probably not going to be one of the best in the world at it. That's a high, that's a tall order, you know. So, so this is my opportunity to fuel that desire to be world class. And like truly world class, like not top 1,000, like I'm top six, I'm top 10. This has been an obsession for 20 years. This has been my devotion for 20 years. Like, my girlfriend is my kayak and my paddle. What is it you would want people to be thinking for you or about you before you race? I don't need people to focus on me or my race. It's more, you know, the feeling that people care about paddling in Canada. And, like, this country is paddling. Like, there wouldn't be a Canada if there wasn't a canoe, and there wouldn't be a canoe if there wasn't Canada. Like, this is, you know, little known fact, the C1, like the C in C1-1000, Mark Oldershaw's event, stands for Canadian, not canoe. Like, look it up. It means Canadian style canoeing. So it's, uh, it's well ingrained in our culture and if I want Canadians to think any one thing after watching me or just before watching me, it's like, go for paddle. Go enjoy the beautiful country that we're so lucky to live in and do it on the water because, you know, in like six months it's going to be frozen solid and we're all going to be miserable. So go and enjoy the summer. <laughs>